प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरिकृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. In the beginning of this year, from the months of January to April, Puja Niskam Swami conducted Yuva Sabha in Gujarati every Saturday night. That Yuva Sabha was converted into English and a PDF was made along with that. A Katha was also discoursed. Puja Swami has started back Yuva Sabha after the end of Sadhguru Smriti Mahotso and this is our very first Yuva Sabha which was conducted on September 7th, 2019 this is Yuva Sabha course number 3 meaning part 3 Pujya Swami discoursed on the Vachnamrut Sarangpur 2nd developing affection for the form of God we'd like to first read just that Vachnamrut fragment or uh, that part which Swami uh, had conducted his, his discourses on it and then furthermore learn what Swami had to say Swami Narayan Hare Vachnamrut Sarangpur 2nd Developing Affection for the Form of God On Shravan Vadi 6th Samat 1877 American date, August 29th, 1820. Sriji Maharaj was sitting facing north on a large decorated cot, which had been placed on the veranda outside the north-facing north rooms of Jiva Khachar's Darbar in Sarangpur. He was wearing a white kiss and had tied a white bag around his head. He had also covered himself with a white blanket. At that time, an assembly of Munis as well as Devotees from various places had gathered before him. Then addressing the Munis, Sriji Maharaj said, Please begin a question and answer session amongst yourselves. Thereupon, Swayam Prakasanan Swami asked, By what means can a devotee of God develop intense affection for the form of God? What are the ways that one can develop affection for the form of God? The Munis, meaning the Santos that are seated there, attempted to answer the, that question amongst themselves but were unable to do so satisfactorily. So Sriji Maharaj began to reply, Affection can develop due to beauty, due to lust, due to avarice, due to some selfish motive, or due to the other person's virtues. Of these, affection which stems from beauty lasts only until one sees the disfigurement caused by leprosy in the other person's body or until the person develops leukoderma. Thereafter, the affection which one once existed would dissolve, meaning leprosy and leukoderma are skin diseases. Um, which completely uh, disfigure the the face and the body itself due to that everyone is attracted to a face so if the face is disfigured or if it has some kind of disease then obviously someone would lose interest in that person immediately 
and would look for someone else. Thereafter, the affection which once existed would dissolve. In the same way, affections stemming from avarice, lust, and selfishness also ultimately dissolve. Affection developed due to the other person's virtues, however, ultimately survives. So the point is, no matter how you develop affection, no matter what way, they're mostly all bound to dissolve, except the affection developed by seeing the other person's virtues. Now, Maharaj will explain what kind of virtues, internal and external, but just to scrape the surface, virtues meaning good qualities. Virtues meaning, if we look at in uh, just a general aspect, this person is kind, this person um, is polite, this person is respectful, this person is very humble, this person is very affectionate, all these kinds of virtues. And in satsang, we can say this person uh, has a lot of maima, this person does a lot of seva, this person is uh, has the inclination of dharma bhakti gnana vairagya in his life, this person has uh, affection for santo. These are virtues in satsang. Maharaj is just first speaking on a general aspect by just saying that affection f will ultimately survive if a person, if, if it's developed by seeing a person's virtue. Bhagwan is just putting a general statement out there. Now he's going to take it a little deeper inside. Then Somlakachar asked Sriji Maharaj, which virtues are these external ones or internal ones? Meaning there's two types of virtues, external and internal, that Puja Swami will also uh, narrate throughout his discourse. But let's see what Sriji Maharaj has to say. To this, Sriji Maharaj replied, How is it possible to develop affection due to external virtues? Rather, it is affection stemming from the virtues of the person's speech, thoughts, and deeds that would not dissolve. Now, are you asking only about a devotee developing affection for God? Or are you also asking about God developing affection for the devotee? Now, Maharaj first grafts the whole um, perspective by saying that virtues of a person through speech, thoughts, and deeds these will not dissolve now speech thoughts and deeds speech and deeds can be seen or heard but thoughts cannot be seen thoughts are invisible thoughts are only for those persons mind but However one portrays oneself, however one's mentality or thoughts are, that's how one will behave through the speech and through one's physical actions. So then one can guesstimate, one can presume that these person's thoughts are based off of this kind of inclination. Then Maharaj says, that now are you asking about a devotee developing affection for God now there's two aspects to this but the aspect that we think about generally is the devotee of God developing affection for God but Maharaj is asking as well in the second second part or are you asking about God developing affection for that devotee? Now that's unheard of. That's something that is very, very rare. That's something that is very, very unique. That's something that is very, very uh, different from the world. How could God develop affection for his devotee? That's what Maharaj is asking else. Swam Prakashan Swami clarified, we're asking about both. So obviously santos are like, we want to hear both uh, the answers from you, Maharaj. So kindly please share your thoughts. Sriji Maharaj then began to elaborate by saying, 
One should not hurt any living being with one's speech. Moreover, during a question-answer session where principles are being debated with God and a senior sadhu, even then, those who are junior should yield to those who are senior. Also, in an assembly, one should not ask questions that may embarrass a sadhu who is senior to one. Bhagwan is showing the level of mariyada or the level of respect that should be uh, uh, conducted between a senior sadhu and a, a younger new sadhu. Also, one should lovingly and immediately accept the command of God and a senior sadhu, regardless of whether it seems appropriate or inappropriate. Of these, one would not doubt an appropriate command, but even if it seems inappropriate and leads to doubts, one should not refuse to abide it, by it, at least at that time. Bhagwan's practicality, Bhagwan's vivek or his power to discriminate and understand the situation and understand how senior sadhus would become raji is some aspect that no other avatars or incarnations have displayed in their lifetime before on this earth these kinds of practical scenarios that can be actually experienced in real life and such kind of practical scenarios given in that time 230 years ago but are even taking place now Bhagwan saw the future for his devotees and said and spoke in this Vachnamrut and due to this we are able to climb the steps of liberation through Maharaj's grace but Maharaj's Vivek Maharaj's power to understand what is right and wrong and to dilute it in such a fashion that even his devotees can understand is incompar incomparable to any other incarnation, devotee or any anyone else. One should certainly agree and say, Maharaj, I will do just as you say. If that command is such that one cannot accept it, and if it is to be and if it is the wish of God and the senior sadhu to hear one's plea, then one should fold one's hands and before them and say with Bhakti Maharaj, the command which you gave me is fine. But I have certain doubts about it. Meaning, Bhagwan says, don't go, at, don't say no at that time immediately, but wait a little bit, and then again go with a humble plea and plead to that senior sadhu that this is not possible by myself. In this manner, one should speak modestly. However, if it is not really the wish of God or to hear one's plea, then one should tell a senior sadhu or a devotee who is close to him. Although God has given such a command, I am simply I simply cannot accept it. Thereafter the senior sadhu would find a compromise and would also speak to God to help to help make a compromise regarding the command. But regardless of whether the command seems appropriate or inappropriate, one should not immediately refuse to abide by it. Rather, one should use such courtesy to delay the following of the command given by those who are seniors. But when initially told, one should not immediately refuse. This is how one should behave regarding the virtue of speech. As a result, God and the senior sadhu develop affection for that devotee and that devotee also develops strong affection towards God. Bhagwan only showed the aspect of speech in this first segment, and Pujaniska Swami also read until this very point, 
and then he started to conduct his narrations on each of the points. Maharaj here shows us how not only how we can develop affection for God, but how God in his senior sadhu can develop affection for us via speech. In this whole Vachanabhut, Bhagwan will cover speech, deeds, and the last one. Speech, deeds, and thoughts. And from there, we will be able to understand the whole perspective of how God and His senior sadhu can develop affection for us. Now, the first point Swami mentioned is the fruits of doing satsang, meaning seva, bhajan, puja, etc., is to develop affection for Maharaj. You know, there is a misconception in many, many, many devotees by doing these kinds of spiritual endeavors they forget that the fruits are to develop affection for God or Maharaj and by doing this meaning what seva, bhajan, puja, etc. so on and so forth is so I develop affection for Bhagwan. they tend to do these physical kinds of, uh, you can say, uh, endeavors. So when others come, when others look, they praise, they say, this Bhagat is doing so much seva, this Bhagat is doing so much bhajan, this Bhagat is doing such a nice puja. Due to that, instead of the fruits of developing affection for Bhagwan, we start to see the fruits of developing our ego. And due to that, Bhagwan does not become happy. And due to that, we do not develop affection for Bhagwan either. That is why, no matter what we do in satsang, how much ever we do, we should always remember that I'm doing this so I develop affection for Maharaj. Because the fruits are that. After coming into satsang, after coming into the company of a satpurush, and doing San Samagam and following the rules of the Shiksha Patri and reading the principles that are stated in the Vachnamrut and doing puja and not eating outside or not eating onion and garlic, following the codes and commandments of the Shiksha Patri. All there is to be done, that equal sign, after the equal sign, it is developing affection for Maharaj. Affection meaning remembering his murti, remembering his divine charitras, and staying content, satisfied, and fulfilled with only Maharaj, but not the world. These are the fruits of performing such kind of spiritual endeavors. Moving on. Majority of the time, Affection in satsang is developed due to virtues of santo or devotees. Majority of the time, affection in satsang is developed due to virtues of santos and devotees. Maharaj talked about virtues and how virtues do not vanish. And in this context, Swami is saying majority of the time, affection in satsang is developed due to virtues of santos now in this age, in this modern age, people who come into satsang, newcomers, they're not so much fond of, you can say, the building facilities or, you know, the whole total uh, kind of technology or modernization. But, After observing the sadhus, the environment, the atmosphere, the devotees, they take some kind of gun or virtue and from that they fit it inside of their mind and their heart. And off of that, 
an impression is made and off of that they start to come into satsang. Now satsang is done in that way. Such kind of impressions in the form of virtues are embedded inside of one's heart and due to that one comes into satsang and one stays here and worships God and learns about the upasana and agna of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and learns about how to become a kantik and dharma, bhakti, gnan, vairagya, etc., so on and so forth. But that is first done through setting an impression in that individual's mind and heart regarding the greatness of satsang, regarding the virtues of sadhus, what kind of life they live, regarding the devotees and how strict of a rules they follow, even in, after staying in the world, even while staying in the world. And due to that, an impression is set. And those kinds of impressions from virtues do not vanish because they know that compared to this sadhu, compared to this devotee, there is no one outside that does these kinds of things. And that's how satsang is developed in these modern day times. Moving on. The affection developed due to other person's good virtues never breaks, as Maharaj mentioned. Even if the affection is vanquished, one will stay, still have good thoughts towards that person. Now, this is the plus point of developing affection through virtues. Is suppose uh, there is some turbulence and you know there is some misconception, misunderstanding. You might become first. You were a very close contact with that person by virtues. You saw that per those person's uh, qualities, but somehow some kind of misunderstanding, misconception leads us far from that person, and our affection for that person might even break. But one will still have good thoughts towards that person. Why? What is the reason for that? Even if affection has broken. In the world, if we look at it, a husband and wife living for 15, 20 years together, and all of a sudden, they get a divorce and they depart and go their own ways. Well, was that affection due to virtues? If it was, then even if affection might have been broken, there are possibilities of uniting back together. But in the world, more so, affection is developed through physical characteristics or some kind of selfish motive. But in satsang, Maharaj is saying that this is uh, if if one has good virtues they would never break but affection is vanquished one will still have good thoughts towards that person the only way affection is broken is by looking at that person's bad virtues or avgun taking that person's bad virtues automatically breaks affection for that person in the vachanamrut the most highlighted point that Bhagwan Swaminarayan stresses and emphasizes through his Vachnamrut in many, many chapters, in the most, you can say, common point is Maharaj always states, take a person's good virtues, do not take a person's bad virtues. Simple statement, but it has such a tremendous effect on the level of satsang and spiritual spirituality that is developed in a person that no other aspect has such an impact. That's how great of a point this is. And when one takes augun or bad quality, automatically we can see that even upon looking at that person's face, we turn away, we go away. Even upon taking a person's bad augun, we do not pick up their phone calls, we do not care for them anymore, so on and so forth. Things like this happen. 
And the reason why affection breaks is because one looks at the bad qualities of that person. Everyone knows about each other's good and bad virtues, but the affection, if broken, when one sees more bad virtues in that person than he is, than he accepted. Problem is, everyone knows that this person does a lot of seva, and that this person is also lazy. Now, it's a one-to-one -one balance, but you for you. In satsang, usually we don't really recall those bad qualities. But when bad qualities outweigh the good qualities and we keep looking at the bad virtues of that person, then automatically affection breaks and one becomes far from that person. That's why it's very, very important to be aware of that factor after coming into satsang. And the more and more closer you get to santos and bhaktos, the more and more likely chances there are to develop bad qualities because you see more and more of their nature. You see more and more of their swabhav. And due to that, automatically, it's human inclination. It's just something bound to happen. We see that this person likes to sleep and this person likes to eat a lot and this person talks too much and this person is like this and that so on and so forth but after coming into satsang true satsang is when one outweighs one's bad qualities over the good qualities when one thinks of good qualities of others and doesn't even look at any bad qualities and only looks at the bad qualities of oneself then satsang is developed and progress is made Moving on, doing a physical action like listening to Katha or doing Seva are external virtues, for example. And for example, after reading a Vachnamrut, you keep thinking about it and in your free time you like to know more about it is an internal virtue, meaning visible and invisible. The visible virtues are, you can, or external virtues are, you can say, listening to katha, doing some kind of physical action, seva, all these one can see. One is able to see, others are able to see. And after reading the Vachnamrut and pondering upon that point, thinking about what Bhagwan's intentions are, are, what level Bhagwan is talking about in this very point, that is an internal virtue which no one can see but Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush. External virtues are developed due to staying in a congregation. Meaning, when you live together, automatically if you see someone doing seva, most likely, 70 to 80% of the people are going to be like, Oh God, I'm not doing anything, I should go do seva. Because that person is doing a lot of seva. Due to that, the inclination for seva develops for that person. Automatically, it's because that person is looking at the other person's virtue of seva and feels a little guilt as well that I should also be doing this. For example, your friend is going to mandir for seva and if, he, if you don't go, then you think santo will feel that you don't find mandir important. Due to that, you will also go. Kind of like a guilt feeling, right? And and due to that, you feel obligated that I should also go, I should also make an appearance and do seva there. So due to that, santos do not think. But honest to God, santos do not think anything like that. But it's just a human inclination. When one one sees one doing something, one also feels that one should also do the same thing. Internal virtues are developed due to your internal thoughts. How do you think when you are alone? Now, this is something no one can see. This is something that is between your soul, Maharaj, and the Ekantik Satpurush. And such kind of satsang such kind of virtue of internally thinking and 
doing antar drashti it's called introspection in thinking inside about this satsang this prapti uh, the greatness of maharaj guruji santo bhakto this whole loedam parivar where maharaj has put us currently where we were before what would be we be doing currently if maharaj had not taken us in this satsang if guruji had not accepted us as his where would we be all these kinds of thoughts when we think inside of our head alone then such kind of virtues are developed and due to that one would really develop the fruits of satsang physical seva is necessary coming to mandir that's necessary but that's kind of like 1 plus 1 or 5 times 5 a little easy but more so deeper in thinking in one's head about this satsang about the vachanamrut swami nivato that's more like the level of calculus which is very difficult so when comparing both first you do need 1 plus 1 2 plus 2 5 times 5 but then you don't want to just stay in that level you also want to develop your skills of you can say equations algebra geometry and then calculus so maharaj is also intent is not only to stay on the surface of just doing everything physical but maharaj's intent is also to perform antardrashti think internally and develop those kinds of virtues as well whoever wants to develop a intense affection for god should develop his speech in a way that no living being gets hurt in every living soul every living person there's a soul not only a person but a creature an insect a bacteria anything we see that's living it has a soul inside of it and inside of that soul god resides there which god bhagwan swami narayan he resides there and from there he listens to everyone's speech each other's conversations and if someone says something which is hurting which is cruel painful then that bhagwan inside of the other person's soul becomes hurt and due to that if that bhagwan becomes hurt how will you develop affection for bhagwan and how will bhagwan develop affection for you bhagwan says that you look at me inside of your heart but you cannot see everyone inside of uh, you cannot see me inside of everyone else's heart then how can i develop affection for you how could i develop affection for you if you cannot see me also in a other person's heart that's why there's a saying that you know the body has many bones and it it it, it, it has the ability to physically do everything but if someone gets hurt then a hand can be broken a leg can be broken but a tongue does not even have one bone but it has the ability to break many bones meaning it has the ability to hurt someone the opposite person very much so that's why the starting point is speech controlling one's speech understanding going inside of another person's shoes and then saying speaking and shooting words out and the one thing about shooting words is it can never be retracted once you say something that person is going to hear it and then it can't come back there is no way of retracting it no matter how much sorry as you say you already said it once it's gone from your mouth but we should think and filter our thoughts 10 15 20 50 100 times and then speak and due to that we should keep bhagwan in the perspective that bhagwan is also in his heart so if i speak like this then 
how would this person react? Will this person become hurt? And inside of our heart, an answer will come because Bhagwan also lives inside of our heart. And Bhagwan would say, Yes, do not say this because this person will become hurt by these words. That's why speech is the number one first uh, virtue to control in order for God to develop affection for us. If you get in a debate with a senior saint or develop or devotee, then even if you are true, you should purposely accept defeat before God. What Maharaj and his Satpurush are looking at is not the surface of, for example, if a senior sadhu says that that this is not a paper and this is a, 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 a sword, and you say, this is not a sword, this is a paper, you can't see. A senior sadhu who is able to develop sadhus, to keep them in his control. Thousands and thousands of devotees worship him, and he doesn't know that this is not a paper and this is a sword. But to accept defeat, to become humble, to let go our ego, to let go of our mind's thoughts, and to become and to completely merge with the thoughts of the Satpurush is the very reason of this point. It says that in debate with a senior saint, one should purposely accept defeat before God. These are one this is one of the reasons why God and his Satpurush develop affection for that person. They want our ego to become dissolved. It's not about if this object is a paper or a sword. It's about your ego becoming dissolved in front of the Satpurush and Bhagwan himself. That's what they're measuring. That's what they're looking at. And off of that, when they see humbleness, true humbleness, automatically affection is developed. For example, if Guruji or Santo gave you some seva, but you have certain thoughts about it, some of them which are appropriate and others which are inappropriate. But say yes at that time, but if you think you can't do it, then you should fold hands with bhakti, meaning devotion, and put forth your request. This is a vivek that is shown here. Maharaj stated and Pujaswami here clarified further on and said that, you know, if this is not possible, fold your hands and humbly request do not do not be like i can't do it or this or that but humbly with with bhakti with devotion say that this is difficult for me can we take it another approach like that saying it with bhakti meaning emotion thinking that whatever the great sa saint or devotee says is for my own good but i still don't understand this so i should request them request to them whatever they might be saying to me they would have thought about everything and then told me but my brain doesn't accept it so I should request to them meaning one should learn to accept and one should understand that whatever this Ekantik Satpurush devotee is saying is for my own benefit if we look at our benefit because there is always some minute selfish motive that is hidden within all of us. If we think about that, oh, he's only doing it for a benefit. This is for my benefit. Uh, there is no hurt in this. I'm not becoming hurt, but am I actually benefiting? Then automatically one would merge into that, uh, that person's talks, actions, deeds, everything. It would be easy for us to bend however the Satpurush wants us to bend. Requesting in this manner won't take away the emotions or bhakti from your request. Rather, you are saying it with wisdom. This helps us attain the rajipo of a saint and devotee. 
saying it with wisdom vivek and saying it in such a fashion that you know with emotion and bhakti maharaj and satpurush automatically develop affection for us one should use courtesy to follow commands but never say anything directly or immediately back to someone regarding commands this is even in basics of the world this is kind of like um politely politeness uh they even teach us in school that you should not uh you should say this in this way and you should say this in this way and this is a simple vivek that bhagwan has also stated Be- behaving in such a way god and his saints become happy on us we should behave with speech in such a way that everyone becomes happy on us god and the senior sadhu become extremely happy on us when we do seva bhajan tap accompanied with the three aspects of vinay meaning humbleness bhakti meaning devotion and dinta meaning being approachable say someone likes to do a lot of bhajan but if guruji says to do seva then you should do seva but at that time we should not never say no meaning these three elements of vinay bhakti and dinta are kind of like that samjan that understanding that is needed to do the seva bhajan tap whatever so on and so forth why because if we do not have these three elements and we do everything bhagwan still counts it as very little but if we have these three elements and we do just a little then bhagwan counts it greatly because remember seva bhajan tap these are all external virtues but bhagwan wants us to develop internal virtues which is vinay bhakti and dinta when we develop such kind of internal virtues and then perform the external virtues automatically maharaj and his ekantik satpurush become happy on us in satsang you should always be happy and stay pleasant otherwise if you will be angry at at the time when at the time then one day you will become angry on saints too then the rajipo that you had you had attained previous or current would not remain meaning your subhavs no matter how much one tries to hide it in satsang if you have a subhav of becoming angry if your natural inclination is anger and if you do not discard it or remove it through understanding then one day it's going to bite you back and how so just like how you first get angry at a person that is inferior to you since you're superior outside in the world that's how it looks but one day you'll also become angry with a saint as well and if that happens then all the rajipo all the things that you have done to make that sadhu raji will completely become erased in that sadhu's heart then there is no point that's why one should develop internal virtues which will last so that external virtues also have a pleasant decorated coating around them and the final and main point the main point of this course is that by our behavior guruji should develop affection for us and because of that we develop more affection for god why because when guruji becomes happy he also he gives us what he has which is affection for maharaj so we also develop affection for maharaj the main point is bhagwan is there but bhagwan is such such a high element bhagwan is such a great entity that he is not fathomable in the minds of a mere human but a satpurush comes on this earth becomes very very low leveled matches his level 
with our level even goes lower at times. So we behave in such an accordance that if we do something, then that Satpurush will like it and he develops affection for us. And due to that, we get his Rajipo and due to that, we automatically develop affection for Maharaj. That is his main intent. That is why he has come here on this earth. The Satpurush's main goal, intent, even according to Gadada, first chapter 67, the first paragraph, Bhagwan shows the whole intent uh, of the Satpurush and what he likes and, uh, and, uh, and how he behaves here on this earth for the sake of others. When we understand that intent and we behave in accordance with the Satpurush's agna and wish, with such kind of virtues of vinay and uh, vinay bhakti and dinta, then the Satpurush will become happy on us and we will def develop affection for him and he will def develop affection for us. And in result, Bhagwan will develop affection for us and we will develop affection for him. So this is the main uh, point of uh, this course, uh, which is uh, U.S. Sabha course uh, part three. Uh, this is the date of September 7, 2019. Uh, this is uh, U.S. Sabha courses for the ages between 18 to 45. You'd be able to, uh, if you would like to uh, register for this course, just uh, email us at Loyada Manje uh, and just subject header uh, uh, register for U.S. Sabha and then you'd be sent a link and off of that you'd be able to be uh, in, enrolled in this uh, Sabha and by the time of December uh, the Sabhas will mostly be done another examination will be taken and uh, and um, there would be placements of one to three first second third place and one would get some kind of token of appreciation by the hands of Puja Guruji so saying this, um, understand this course, de uh, developing perfection for Maharaj, and uh, next course will continue uh, for next week. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami